On page three of the syllabus, we see the grading policy. All your assignments, including attendance, discussions, tests, are going to total a thousand points by the end of the semester. Nothing is oddly weighted. Every single assignment is worth the same 100 points. And that means two things. One, it will be very easy for you to keep up with your current grade. Uh, the calculations are all taking place in D2L. It'll be easy for you to predict what you need on a particular test or assignment in order to bring your grade up. And it also means that what you get on one assignment, if you do very well, doesn't mean that you can do very poorly on the next assignment. Since they're all weighted exactly the same, flunking one is going to have a pretty big impact on your grade. Each assignment throughout the semester is going to tally up to about 10% of your final grade in the course. As far as each assignment is concerned, details for them will be available on D2L when they're assigned and in the unit that they're assigned. But to give you a brief overview, in Unit 1 we'll do a campus resources sort of scavenger hunt. The point of that assignment is going to be for you to find the contact information for various departments around campus, what the different departments do, when you would want to utilize them, and how you can go about utilizing them. That way, if throughout the semester you do end up with a particular problem that's going on, maybe your financial aid falls through, well, who do you contact, what information do you need, what are their hours, where are they located, all that sort of um, information. Also as part of Unit 1 and Unit 2, at the beginning of this course, we're going to set you up with an academic advisor. An academic advisor's job is basically to evaluate the courses that you've taken and the courses that you need to take in order to transfer or to graduate. If you've already determined what sort of job you want, an advisor can help you determine what degree you would need to get that job or to get that license, and they'll also help you plan out when you will take which class, in what order, what GPA you need, and if you're going to transfer, which schools have programs that are better oriented towards that particular program. College Readiness Assessment, the Smarter Measure and Do What You Are Assessments. These assignments are pretty easy. They're really more of a self-evaluation measure. The Smarter Measure is an assessment of your learning style. So that'll be tied into the Study Skills section and the Organization Skills section where we talk about people who are auditory learners and who benefit from recordings like this versus people who are visual learners who can just read the syllabus on their own and they've, they've got it and they can go, versus social learners who like study groups and so on and so forth. So that'll kind of play into the best way to utilize your time. The Do What You Are assessment is another personality assessment. It will do a psychological evaluation, your personality, your preferences, your habits, your thoughts and values and it'll line those up with different careers. The idea behind this is that though you probably have an idea of what job you want, students typically decide on that based upon people they know or something they've seen in movies or something that they've read about, but there are lots of jobs that are similar and they're also kind of a niche category and so they're not really popular. So for instance here, Students who come in wanting to go into the nursing program, they say, I want to work in healthcare, but I don't want to spend so much time being a doctor that it takes me 10 years to actually get a job. Well, nursing is a pretty good occupation, and that's fine. Have you ever considered being an instrumentist? An instrumentist is the individual who works in a surgical ward. They prep the patient, they prep the room, and when the surgeon comes in and is performing the surgery, they monitor, they help the physician, they pass the tools around, and after surgery, 
they stitch up the patient, clean up, and they're part of the surgery team without actually being a physician who has a PhD. So that's one of those jobs that exists but students typically don't think about. And so through the do what you are assessment, we'll get a sort of a, a quick view of different jobs that you might not have considered but that might be similar to what you want to pursue. The Path to Success paper is a personal evaluation, a look at life circumstances, plans, sitting down and actually creating a a workable goal towards graduation that will include financial management, transferring, uh, maybe family and personal matters, and the best way to preemptively take control of your life before it gets out of control. The Career Exploration Project, um, it says paper and or presentation. Because this is an online course, it's just going to be a paper. But this is going to occupy about three or four weeks. So go ahead and circle that one. The Career Exploration Project is going to be a very big portion of this course. Through that, we're going to practice research skills, we're going to show you the different resources that are available at a college level as far as research is concerned. We'll also put you in touch with the Writing Center to make sure that your communication skills are um, up to par and on an academic level that is expected of college students. Attendance and participation. Really, just go ahead and scratch out attendance since we don't have a classroom. It's just going to be a participation grade. That's going to come from your weekly form discussion posts. So each week, by Wednesday, you're expected to make an initial post that answers a question that I've posed. None of them are really going to be academically rigorous. It's more opinion-based, evaluation-based, and sharing your perceptions and weighing it against the perceptions of others. Then by the Saturday of that week, you'll go back in and reply to the posts that your other classmates have made and sort of engage that way. In, in addition to presenting what your plan is, you're going to see the plans that other students have, which gives you more insight to the options that are available. The weekly schedule assignment, um, this one's kind of important. Put a star by that one. It's odd. You're going to start this assignment in Unit 1, and really it just boils down to utilizing a calendar to make sure that you stay organized, that you have notations on when assignments are due, when tests are due, what chapters you need to be reading, so on and so forth. You will start it in Unit 1. You have to have four weeks in a row worth of organization, and then you'll turn the assignment in in Unit 4. It's sort of a weird one because you have to start it so far in advance. Instructor selected assignments, see below. Each unit is going to have a quiz. Each quiz is going to be worth 25 points. The lowest grade of those five will be dropped. The quizzes are going to be 100% from your book. So again, the textbook for this class is required. If you don't have the textbook, these quizzes are just going to be completely out of left field. We'll have a midterm exam and a final exam. Both of those tests are also going to come from the book. And I'll have a couple of study guides available for the final exam. The final exam is comprehensive. It will cover everything from the entire semester. I won't provide you with a study guide for the midterm exam, though. Part of that is because it's comprehensive only for the first half of the semester, and part of that is to kind of challenge you into creating your own study guides so that you can see how to get organized and how to evaluate your own study habits, your own organizational skills. And then by the end of the semester, you'll be earning a thousand points, so it's a pretty easy math to figure out what your grade is going to be. As far as the specifics on due dates for any of these assignments and more details on how you're going to be filling them out, 
you'll need to see the instructions for that assignment which will be available in the unit where the assignment is actually assigned. When it comes to turning the assignments in, everything's going to be submitted to D2L to the Dropbox that's titled for the assignment. The specifics on how to do that are available on D2L under Start here, the D2L Audio. There's a section for receiving instructions and turning in assignments. You'll definitely want to familiarize yourself with that. And I have a Dropbox set aside so that you can practice uploading documents to see how it will work without the stress of worrying about the grade that's going to come out of did it go through properly. So I highly suggest that you take a few minutes to play around with that system.